one of the stars of Hellboy, which is in theaters this Friday. He'll be in John Wick, along with Keanu Reeves and Halle Berry and Lawrence Fishburne and crew coming up uh, next month in May, when also the return of Deadwood with Deadwood, the movie that is uh, none other than Ian McShane here on the program. Good to see you, nice sir. Nice to be here. Richard. What a pleasure to have you. Um, your dad was a footballer. Is that a mm-hmm. fact? That is Absolutely. a fact. Manchester United. Came down when he was uh, like 15 from Glasgow and played yeah. for Blackburn Rovers. Went in the war, came out, played briefly for Bolton and Blackburn. Then United signed him in 1950. We moved to Manchester. And then so I grew up knowing every, all the players. I was still close to everybody because when he finished, he, he carried on as a scout for the club. And as a sort of, he ran the, he did the announcements at halftime, put the records on, whatever, in those days. And like in the he spun late, the discs? early 60s. He and he loved, no, he, well, kind of, because, you know, though, they had a PA system, you know, to play a few records, you yeah. know, Manchester United, reggae, whatever. And it was, I mean, they still play it now. Because I was back there about, when was I back there? About six weeks ago, I saw a game there. Yeah, it's about to say, how often do you go and... I try and go, well, my mom's still alive. She lives about 10 minutes from the ground still, so I see her all the time. Mm -hmm. I go back and visit her, and then I'm lucky enough to catch a game. Because Alex Ferguson's one of my oldest friends, so... Okay. But i got to say, you know, I mean, all these great, but, uh, you know, this year, I'm Manchester City, and they do play some beautiful football. you got to give it up, Mm -hmm. you know. I don't want them to win the quadruple. No, <laughs> we won the treble. We can't have them win in the quadruple. Give us a break, would you, Pepe? You should have come to us anyway in the first place. Who is your favorite player, just period, that you have you remember either growing up watching or you've enjoyed uh, watching? I saw film and seen players. I mean, I go back to, you know, Di Stefano could probably be compared to any, any player, the great mm-hmm. Argentinian sort of wandering Real Madrid when Real Madrid started that, you know, the Galacticos, if you like, in the 50s when they collected a lot of the Hungarian... I think the Hungarian side, which has revolutionised soccer for me when I sat with my dad and watched them beat England at Wembley 6-3 in 1953, Pushkas, Hidaguti, Botzik, you can name the Grosic, mm-hmm. they were a phenomenal side. Then they had the revolution and the Real Madrid plucked, if you like, like Pushkas, and that started. Di Stefano from Argentina, and then they played... And I saw them play at United, Real Madrid. And you imagine in the 50s in England, there's Rab Knight, and all these guys ran out in all white with tans, and everybody went, oh, jeez, you know, wow. And they played as good as they looked. Mm-hmm. So I've always had a sneaking sort of liking for Real Madrid in a way, even though it's, you know, it's a completely falsely run organisation, like most are <laughs> in sport. Most are in sport, because there's so much money, but we both know that. But they keep up this, you know, it's fascinating. I love the European Cup. we got Barcelona next. This week, which is tough. Right. It's tough. The European competition is tough. Well, I mean, there's a Champions League game against Barcelona yeah. coming up in just a couple That's of days. That's what I meant. Yeah, right. I yeah. mean, no, I went to the last final with Barcelona, which is a kind of a cruel lesson. We, we looked great for 10 minutes and never saw the ball again, you know, for the entire game. Sure. But you've got to be, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm a fan, but I grew up with the game, so I know about sports and that level of it, which is, it's a cruel thing. Ian McShane here uh, on the Rich Eisen Show, and we'll get to uh, Hellboy, John Wick, Deadwood, and the rest of your uh, filmography in a second. Do, any American sports teams that you're you're partial to at all? Yeah, I've, I I really have a always a sneaking love for the the Raiders. When I first came over in '75, the first team I said play uh, the Oakland Raiders. Then they came here. I used to go and see a couple of games here, but the atmosphere was very dodgy here in in the in Los Angeles. Yeah, uh-huh. in, in the '80s, it all got confused with sort of, you know, identities and game. It became a sort of a mm-hmm. going down. It was interesting. We fight the games right. or whatever. Which you know, it's well, a there's, big family. They didn't want that. You have know? you ever been to the Black Hole up in Oakland? But, Did you ever go to a game No, I never got Oakland? to Oakland. No, okay. but I mean, I saw them then. But, that, but, but watching that team, I mean, Stabler was like a wonderful player to watch if you wanted to know about how to throw a football. Right. You know. I mean, Kenny, Kenny the Snake, right? Yes, yeah. yeah, there he is up there. And Beletnikov the run those great routes. Lester Hayes was all stick him at the back, and then you had that <laughs> amazing defense. You know, and he was like a mixture of all those players that nobody wanted. Also run by a guy who was the most interesting guy in the, in the NFL. I was about to say, he Al went, Well, because he didn't seem to fit amongst all these, you know, super corporate people. And he was a coach. Dal Davis was one of those people, which reinvented the game, if you like, and the way it was level played. Also, you know, Rich, you could explain that yes. dirty word socialism to America if you wanted by saying that's what the NFL is based on. <laughs> if you want to look at the politics, very successful because <laughs> you, you put in, you take out. And that's right. what it is. But it's like on a, on a higher level. But it's like it's, uh, 
it's a great game, but it's got dissipated over the years. I don't know. So much, you know, when they change the rules, it's used it to make it protect the quarterback because now, mm -hmm. you know, the athletes are so expensive. They're going to be, they're like thoroughbred horses, you know, taken away, whatever. That's why I think the calls have become so weedy in basketball, games like that, which I used to love. My favorite basketball team was. The Pistons, the 88 team, the Pistons. No that, oh, the one I, I love that. My favorite <laughs> the moment bad was the bad when they walked up. That I thought it was great when she Jordan and that love, and they went and they went. Ah, screw you! And they walked. <laughs> well, uh, two minutes to play, they walked up. I thought I was yes, that's my kind of team. <laughs> they thought no, no. It's like everybody thought, it. you know, when Robert Duran, Robert Duran fought Sugar Ray, and Sugar Ray fought the last ten seconds of each round. Remember the and the. Uh, and it was like, Duran was like, it wasn't like, no more. He went, no, nah, I can't. No more. I can't stand. Going to fight me? Okay. No. I love this. How I love it. How good is this? By the way, just to be talking to the guy who played Al Swearingen with, uh, talk Al Davis with him. This is fantastic. And you love the bad boys, too. Uh, Ian McShane here on the Rich Eisen Show. All right, let's talk about Hellboy. It's the third live-action Hellboy film. We just saw a clip of it. And it is just as Complete good reboot. as it's all not, of It's them, nothing right? to do with the other two, Rich. Right. The other two were... Uh, you know, I thought lovely metaphysical versions of Guillermo's great imagination. Right. Mike Mignola, who wrote the comic book, wanted to go back to a hardcore, yeah. in-your-face, violent characters, knowing where they are. And this is a complete reboot in every way. Yes. And there's Johnny Hurd, who played my part, one of our oldest pals in the acting business, passed yeah. on before we did this. I sort of was like a sort of, yeah, you should do this, you know. And then working with David, who's really embodies, Harbour, embraces right? the role. He's great. He's terrific mm -hmm. in it. On the other actors, Sasha and uh, Mila and Daniel. No, it's good. It's a, it's a, it's a really great popcorn. Get out there, IMAX. It looks great. It's, it's very violent, very profane. Mm -hmm. it's, I'm watching American football. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, by the way, I think, I don't know what, uh, Hellboy would be a hell of a pass rusher, I think. An edge rusher, just go oh, and go yeah. take somebody out, right? I think he could play any position he yeah, wanted. Whatever he wants I mean, to. whatever. What do you want to play me? Whatever uh, you want to play. Right, you know, exactly. Whatever. Do you enjoy doing uh, uh, a live action uh, sort of. Yeah, no, I mean, it, it was good. I was in Bulgaria for a month. I mean, it's the, the, these great studios, which used to be the old communist studios. This producer, Avi Lerner, bought them, turned them into this very successful studios, which produces all those expendable movies mm -hmm. and all the other stuff. Um, and they're very experienced over there. And it was great. I was there for three weeks. Three months might have been different, Rich. Sure, I hear in you. In Sofia, Bulgaria. But three weeks was really great. Right. One of the finest vegetables I've ever tasted. Is that right? Yeah, no. Well, I didn't know well because that. it's close to Greece. It's an interesting place. But all those places that have been sort of infected by Sovietism, non communist Sovietism, that, mm -hmm. they take years to get over all of the the intrigue and the, you know, and all of the, the baggage that came with that kind of a totalitarian regime, you know. It's cruel on people. I think they're getting over it. But Romania, places like that, Hungary, mm. I mean, we film there because it's it's cheaper. You know, tax-wise, they get enormous breaks. Right. But the people but, are hugely talented. And, you well, know. There's certainly it showed up on the screen, I'll tell you that. Yeah. I mean, you play, again, you play the adoptive father, Professor Trevor Brutenholm, and uh, and you mentioned David Harbour, just a great Hellboy, and yeah, fans terrific. of the series will be truly loving the reboot. Uh, John Wick 3 comes out in the middle of May as well. Yeah. And you're back in that. You're back in that action. Great Keanu, yeah. We're no one wondering again what happened. You know, I gave him an hour, so now the high table's on my ass. Mm -hmm. They're on Keanu's ass. <laughs> they're on uh, Fishbourne's ass. You know, they're on everybody's ass. And right. portrayed by this terrific actor, Kate Asia Dillon, who plays the representative of the high table. This right. sort of strange body of people who we don't know. And it, it continues again. It's his adventures, and it ends with the enigmatic, oh, really? Mm -hmm. Where is he? Because you know this going to be a four. Well, I mean, come on now. I mean... You can't explain it all in three. You have to have right. a four, whatever. But it, it, it was good. It was... It, no, but sure. And I love Keanu. Keanu's top man. He's a great guy. He was how, great. No, well, because like his so. character portrayal of him is that John Wick portrays, you know, John Wick is like the guy... He's like the open hand karate. It's like he mm -hmm. does everything right. And he's methodical. And he's, he can't, he's like, here he is again. Oh, Christ, he's coming out. It's not that sort of, you know, flashy, whatever. It's like, yes. a, it's less what I do. Mm -hmm. And he's terrific to work. And he's a, 
and he's a class act, okay, in his own life. So, so, it's, so you, you're in a sequel with John Wick, and then uh, American God season two's out now, and it looks like you're going to uh, yeah, no, three it's out series three, and again, the so probably late summer, early okay. autumn. Uh, yeah, no, it's been great. It's, it's been a big hit in places all over the world from the great novel because it, I, th I always thought it was a perfect blueprint for TV series to do the book, and then you can take off on these wild side adventures of talking about all well, the big things in life as long as you come back to the main book which is the old gods want to make come back again you mm -hmm. know there's plenty of faith to go around give me a little i'm here you know i'll be you <laughs> ian mcshane here on the rich eisen show all right um i'd love to talk deadwood with you if you don't mind and no do that uh it, just like your character al swearingen whenever there was a, a luminary that would come into his saloon you would open up a can of peaches so I have with you here, right here on the Rich Eisen Show, I got a can of peaches. I, I eat them all the time. So let's know. open up a can of peaches and yeah. talk about Absolutely. Deadwood right there, if you don't mind. Do you, would you like some peaches? If can, no, I'm fine okay, for now, unless you have any double cream to go with. No, them. actually, no, no, it's just a can <laughs> of peaches. No, it was, became a thing, it just... seemed, I mean, that's the genius of Milt, she wrote the show. It became like, I'm sure it was one of those things that they talked, what would they celebrate? They said, well, there's a meeting of the town fathers. What, what have they got? They're all drinking. What are yeah. they going to eat? You can't bring out, right. can't go now and say, bring a basket from, uh, you know, Gelson's or yeah. whatever. <laughs> you know, now it would be like, well, let's open some, what we got? Cans yeah. of peaches. And of right. course, they, everybody got diarrhea from them that first day, if you remember. But the yes. Manning, the, that's Milch's genius about the guy who wrote the show, created yes. it. And the nice thing about, the show, I think, Rich, the fact we were able to come back and do the two-hour movie, was it they waited until they could get us all back. I mean, they could have done maybe a one-off or with, with Tim or Tim and me, you know. Right. I always say, you know, it's Alan Seth, right, the high country, you know, but that wouldn't, <laughs> but not the same. It's not, wouldn't be the You slipped show. right into your, your, oh, your right Deadwood into Alan. right there. But, you know, it's like every, because that's what made Deadwood. Deadwood wasn't a show about just these two guys, although they are important, different sides of a coin, whatever, because, you know, Bullock's as crazy as swearing him when he goes, when he goes right. off on one. And that was Tim's great thing. He thought he was, you know, he said, he said, I'm playing. I said, yeah, yeah, the straight guy, this one. Because he was used to playing offbeat kind of, you know. Right. But Tim was just terrific. He's the moral core of the story along with, you know, all the terrific people in it. And that was great that we all came back. It was 13 years later. We're all 13 years older. We'd right. see, some of us had seen each other now and again or kept in company. But it was the same respect, the same Respect for the characters, the story, the show, because it was a fine show, fine uh, show. Uh, you know. uh, remarkable. I mean, yeah, just, it was it, remarkable to work on. I mean, in every respect, I haven't got one like cynical or even negative word to say, even though it came off the air after three years. I mean, that's got nothing to do with you. You can't, that's got something to do with it. Right. whatever the is big word. Is this know. film pick up right after you Yeah, left? no, there's a link. It picks up 10 years later. It's Statehood Day. In so there's a link. It's state. Yeah, it's become a state. South Dakota. So there's a legitimate reason for Gerald McCrane to come back again because he's now a senator, but he's got business interests. And we hark back to what happened 10 years ago because Trick is going to be Trixie's big day. I won't give that away in mm -hmm. some other way. Uh, and, um, of course, you hark back to the last episode when... We took it when when I when I hatched this when we all hatched this plot mm -hmm. to kill the prostitute in place of in place of Trixie and mm -hmm. of course this comes apparent in this it's a good ha it's a very clever I think cut back to that a memory mm -hmm. a memory of collective guilt on their parts so you never get away from that in Deadwood because terrible things have been done but at the same time there's a moral sense of the town has grown ten years later. Well, Alma comes back because she's got to take care of her property because she owned the bank. I mean, there's a legitimate EB fund. Everybody's Everybody's in it. back. And Phenomenal. well, that's the gift about Milch because he does. David he, he wrote the it, he gave everybody the great. He gave yeah. everybody their wedge, as we say. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, and, and it, to me, some of your soliloquies as Al Swearingen, as that character, yeah. would be would go on for minutes at a time. How did you approach a scene like that? How how did you learn the lines in that regard and well, and and be able to get through a scene like some of these that you were in, Ian? Never even questioned it. I mean, I think in, in nobody did. I mean, we all had them at various points. Billy Sanderson had them as E. B. Farnham. Mm -hmm. He'd have these Shakespeare, you know, suddenly and some of the most foul I said, iambic oh, pentameter. Oh, fantastic say. to do. I mean, but you know, any actor that, as I said, doing that show was like being on. You know, David would come up and say. 
I've just watched the first scene. Because he'd watch a rehearse and then he'd go off and he'd come back and say, I tweak this. And then sometimes he'd say, I'm sorry, I'm going to come back at lunchtime, give you a few more lines. And people would go, well, oh, it's okay. Mm -hmm. Because you trusted each other. You were in a place where you're in a, the overused phrase now, a safe place. But you were. Yeah, everybody was there. The writers, the directors, the editors, the costume. There was no question that you could do. So it was like being in, well, you are near, your self-contained studio, a self-contained group of people, <laughs> yes. and one guy who was smarter than anybody else in the room, who was really leading the show. So you felt, yeah, that's where you did part of the acting. Everybody brought their A game and just got on with it. All know? right, before I let you go, I want to play a game that we call here uh, uh, Celebrity True or False, in which I ask you a couple of questions from previous interviews that you've done or to see if it's true or false from the internet or anything like that. We, re we research on the internet. Let's do that with Celebrity Chain. True. Keeping it real. Or false. Celebrity True or False, again, uh, a Hellboy in theaters near you this Friday. Uh, true or false, you have an obscene amount of socks and underwear. Is that true or false? I do have a lot of socks on the way, yes. <laughs> yeah. My mother brought me up very well. Okay. Even when you're going out, you never know. You could be hit by a bus, so make sure you wear clean underwear. Is that the way it works in your mind? I mean, I mean you, so when you pack, you pack an extra... Uh, and well, nowadays, not so much, because you can get them anyway. You get them online. But, I mean, no, I mean, but it's always good to have that, yes. Okay, uh, next one. one of your it's not because I'm getting old and have problems. Otherwise, I'd just go out and buy a big pack of Depends wherever. <laughs> no, 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 that's <laughs> not... No, no. No, that's nothing. another, that's another wanna... story entirely. Okay. Uh, one of your favorite foods is clotted cream rice pudding from Marks & Spencer. Is that a oh, that story? was... A, oh, that, I remember that was critical. Oh, Absolutely. That was a question of what what would you fear most? And I said, Marks and Spencer's running out of clotted cream and porridge or four more years of uh, that orange gentleman. Yeah, okay, very you. good. Uh, <laughs> I think I know who you're referring to. I didn't uh, know which first, though, okay. which would scare me more. <laughs> Last one. Uh, Powers Booth, who was uh, the late Powers Booth, who yeah. unfortunately would not be in this new uh, Deadwood film. He was originally cast as your character, Al Swearingen, but fell ill before the pilot was filmed and that's how he later appeared in the series as Cy Tolliver. Is that a true story? I think it's true, yeah. Apparently, yeah. He was, you know, otherwise, why would they have gone to England, good an actress they probably thought I was, to find an American, you know, runs a bar in Deadwood in 1886? But, you know, sometimes parts have got your name on it, so whatever, mm -hmm. you know, whatever happened, however, it found its way to me in the end, and the rest is whatever. And we're very welcome to, to have... Powers in the second seasons and play Cy, but sadly he had a recurrence of whatever it was. And um, do you? I know. Do you? Do you have? Uh, was there someone in mind that you channeled to portray Al Sargent? No, Sargin? I didn't even. No, the first they said I was just. I was in England. I remember they said, "Do you want an American series?" I said, "No, I, no, not particularly." At the time I was doing. <laughs> no, I just been my own show in England called Love Joy, which was done right. and produced a couple of other um, independent things with the BBC, and then they said. Well, it's HBO and it's Walter Hill's directing it. And David, I said, when do I, where do I go? Hmm. Right. Because, you know, you're thinking, why? And it was like, and I, and it just happened like, literally like that. I went and did video, I had a chat with them. And then I, mean, I was on a plane and then I did a, sometimes you have an, and I couldn't wait to sort of, it's one of those. Well, Dave is a bit of a genius and Walter you know, directed the pilot beautifully, and uh, it's one of those th it's one of those things. It lives with you forever. Well, I can't wait to see um, everything that you're in, from Hellboy this Friday to obviously John Wick coming back for John Wick Three, Americans Gods, uh, American Gods is uh, on and stars on Sunday nights, and then season three of that, and then the Deadwood film on. It's tough to keep up with you, man, but yeah. I appreciate that uh, you came in to do that. Well, thank you. Nice to talk to you. You Rich. bet. Uh, the man uh, who is one of my favorite characters in all of television, man who played Al Swearingen, uh, Ian McShane here on The Rich Eisen Show. For more of The Rich Eisen Show, tune to Audience Channel 239 on DirecTV for free on BR Live or download The Rich Eisen Show app.